Okay, well, here we are at Cleburne State Park, uh, just outside of Cleburne, Texas. And uh, we've been here for a couple of days. And Judy, what's your overall impression of this park? I love it more than I thought I would. Yeah. I, when I was here before, I don't remember it being so nice. Yeah, we came here and rode our bikes on the on the trails probably about 30 something years ago and we don't remember the park being this nice, the lake being this big and so many trees and stuff. So but we, we were concerned about riding these trails that were going to hurt us probably and uh, uh, so man we didn't really get uh, the full impression of what this mm -hmm. park had to offer and I got to tell you uh, yeah, I'd come back here. You know, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And so um, a sight by the water. Yeah, I mean, okay. Let's let's talk about the um, required stuff. All right. Uh, this park is not a real big park. Uh, while some Texas parks have maybe 300 campsites, this one has 58. All right. Um, it's got a beautiful lake that's a no wake lake, so you can't take bring your you know your bass boats down here or anything like that it's a little windy here today I don't know how that's gonna sound but um, uh, overall it's really nice okay uh, we took a hike today uh, to see the spillway and some other things I'll talk about that a little bit later but this is a CCC park means meaning it was uh, built by uh, men making a dollar a day back in the early 1930s about 1933 and um, most of the CCC constructions are um, are gone. They've been replaced by brand new, you know, 21st century stuff, and they're really nice. I, I, I kind of hate that and like that. I mean, I love the look of an old CC park, I you know, do. and see the, the the clubhouses and things that they made all out of local stone and things mm -hmm. like that. And they did a great job. And and uh, the CCC did a great job here. There are. Well, let me go ahead and talk about it. There are two things that are uh, reminders, I guess you could say, or, or illustrations of what the CCC built here. Uh, one of them is an old road and bridge, which you can probably see right now. And we found that really fun to look at. I uh, enjoy fun old architecture like that. It was built in about 1933, which means in nine years it's going to be a hundred years old how about that wow. i know and then the other thing that's here that the ccc built was the spillway uh and you can't just drive up to it and and see it like you can so many dams and spillways and things like that um this one you got to hike to and the hike isn't bad and i'd say it's completely worth it we went on that hike this morning and we saw a few other people hiking and doing that kind of thing and uh, the the trail has some kind of rough washout points uh, in a couple of places, especially in the beginning, but then it, it smooths out real, real nicely, and uh, I even comment on that. And then, we, then suddenly it just looms up before you, this giant spillway, okay? Now, this lake is a beautiful lake. It's pretty clear. It is completely spring-fed, and so it stays pretty much the same uh, depth I guess you could say year round and the water that's running off of that spillway tells you how powerful this spring is that's filling it all that water that you see you know coming across that spillway is the amount of water that's being pumped into it through the spring mm -hmm. and that's kind of neat if you think about it that that water is coming right out of the ground filling up this lake and then moving on down the stream and I think it's beautiful myself I really do and so that was kind of fun all right, we're going to talk about um, some other things. This isn't a great big historic park. It doesn't have some big Texas battleground that took place or anything like that here. It is just one of those parks that Texas makes, usually on a spring-fed lake like Tyler State Park and some others. And it's just a pretty place to go. And it is, for to be such a kind of small park with only 58 uh, campsites it is one of the top busy parks now it's not as busy as say oh I don't know uh, Ray Roberts or, or Mother Neff or any of those kind of parks for different reasons and uh, Ray Roberts is is busy and 
and because it's got 300 campsites, you know, and so it can accommodate 300 people uh, a, a day. This park can't. It's got 58, but and it often fills up. And in fact, when we booked this site, site 28, which we're sitting right in front of right now, um, it was the last available campsite. So this was kind of a last minute thing for us. I went online and reserved it, gosh, like Tuesday or, or Wednesday or something like that. And we were down here on yeah. Saturday and it was the very last one available. And it's not bad. Mm -hmm. uh, if I had to, I don't know, complain about it, I would say the, um, <laughs> the picnic table, all of the picnic tables in this camping loop are all under shade trees and just really nice and beautiful pretty much most of the day. Ours is it from about 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning. Ours is in sun. Here it is right now, what, six or seven o'clock, something like that. And it's still in hot sun. It's been in hot sun all day. It's just the way the trees happen to be on this day in July. Uh, and uh, we couldn't eat at the picnic table because it's just too hot. It's hot to the touch. All the other picnic tables are great. <laughs> and uh, there's some pictures probably right now that you're looking at. And that's the only thing about it. But any other time of year is probably just fine. If I had to complain about anything, that's about the most nitpicky thing I could possibly imagine. And uh, But other than that, it's really nice. Now, um, we hiked, we took videos, we we explored, we're, we're seeing where we're going to camp the next time we come down here. We fished. Fish, yeah, we're going to fish some more tonight. Um, the campsite, the camping loop, they've got like five camping loops and each one of them has about, you know, ten campsites on it. And uh, they're each camping loop, like a lot of state parks, has its own style or its own theme or something like that. This loop is just a nice loop and you can, it's all uh, back in camping everywhere is. I don't know if they have any, I haven't found a mm -mm. pull through yet. Mm -mm. Uh, they have two camping loops that have uh, full hookups. Um, one of those camping loops with full hook, uh, hookups actually has campsites on the water. And as best I can tell of the 58 campsites there are maybe seven of them are actually on water okay and it's those in the poplar campgrounds now that's two syllables p-o-p-l-a-r like the tree it's not because it's really popular you know boy it's the most popular campground in the park you know yeah you get silly about that sort of thing but uh it the poplar that's easy to remember is uh, is the one with uh, that's on the lake and has full hookups, so keep that in mind. If that's what you want to do. Um, all right, we get down to some uh, dirty business, and that is, as we were pulling into the park, we'd already driven for two hours to get here, and the people who pulled in behind us came up and knocked on our door uh, uh, while we're just signing in. And they said, do you know that your tire is like completely flat? what get out yeah here's a picture of it it was virtually on the rim flat okay and no matter what no matter how prepared you are especially when it's going to be a hot day uh, and it's about 2:20 in the afternoon and it's starting to get pretty warm it's 89 degrees probably something like that it it got a little bit hotter than they said it was going to get this weekend but not much it just got a little over 90 and that's not too bad and uh, and here we are out changing a tire on our RV. I take it off, put it in the back of our vehicle and drive into town, into Cleburne, and they have a discount tire there and we're kind of fans of discount tire. And I, I rolled it in and said, hey, this is off our RV and it's went flat on the road. Well, they were sympathetic. I mean, they're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, and I'm like hot and sweaty and I give it to them. How long did it take for them to <laughs> sell me a new tire <laughs> it, normally they would have fixed it but I've been driving on it so long that I that I messed up the sidewall not and I was gonna patch it myself I've got plugs and things like that and, except when I pulled it off I saw this sidewall that was kind of 
bad. You could push on it, you know, with your finger and stuff. And I went, I told Judy, I said, well, this one is, uh, what did I say? It's, uh, I don't know, I said it is, it is marginal or something like that. It probably needs a new tire because I've messed up the sidewall. And the guy looked at it and says, hey, you need a new tire so because you messed up the sidewall. Well, the good news is I've been meaning to replace these, um, you know, original equipment, not very high strength, high speed uh, tires since I, I bought the RV. And a lot of people advise you to do, will advise you to do that. Uh, get new tires after you buy your RV, some that are rated better and, and more durable and that kind of thing. And I've been meaning to do that. Well, I ended up buying one from uh, uh, from Discount Tire, and they sold me a really nice one. Put it on, and then I put it back in the car and throw it back, and we put it back on, you know. And uh, and it's on the ground now. But so I'm probably going to. Um, uh, we bought a spare when we bought this RV, and the spare is actually a real good tire and uh, better performance rated. So I'm going to take the spare, put it off, put it on the other side, and take the original equipment tire that we have on, on the left side and make it the spare because it will always serve well as a spare. And we're going to have two better performance, higher performance tires on the ground. So that's the good news. But the really and good you news met is... Brian oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, the guy that was uh, next to us in the, in the campsite next to us was tent camping. And he was doing it in order to be able to get away, catch up on some reading, uh, and you know that sort of thing. Kind of off, be off by himself. And first thing he did, being a nice guy, he says, "You need some help with that." And I said, "Yeah, my my jack apparently is not the right one for this camper." And we said, "Well, let me see what I got." And he took a jack out of his car and crawled underneath the camper and started jacking it up. And I started trying to jack it up a little bit more with the with some of the things available, like our our, um, uh, on the front, I've got some really, really strong uh, stabilizing jacks that I put on there that can actually lift the RV. The back, you're not kind of supposed to, so I'm lifting it that way and with the and all kinds of stuff. We're getting, we finally get it off the ground and it just stays flat, you know. And and uh, we uh, uh, put it in the back of our car and take off. Uh, without Brian, you know, I don't know how long it would have taken me or if I could have done this or what I would have done. I, maybe I would have tried to air it up. I have a pump that I carry with me and drive it into town. I don't know what I would have done, but thank goodness for Brian. And to repay his kindness, Judy made him a hot dog later on and he and he ate it and seemed to enjoy it. So there you go. Hey, you know, we're even now. You know, I'm no. thinking. No? All right. But uh, I mean, nice guy. Hats off to Brian. Okay. And uh, I was going to video him and, and, and make him famous here, but he was much too modest for that. But um, anyway, Cleaver State Park. Thumbs yeah. up, right? Sure. Absolutely. And, uh, and we really like it. We will definitely come down here, maybe in the fall or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. And uh, it's a beautiful park, lots of trees. And as far as being close to Dallas, Fort Worth, it's an hour and a half maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's handy. And oh, 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 I almost forgot. What? It's also a dark sky location. Oh, yeah. And, and they were actually having a uh, star party last night. Uh, and I was going to go to it, but we were kind of tired from traveling. And they didn't have any really neat targets they were going to be. I went there and looked at it and, uh, and while they were getting ready and set up. And they had guys there from the amateur uh, astronomy club of Texas and things like that. They had telescopes there that were eight feet long and 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 a foot or two you know aperture all kinds of stuff it would have been cool but they were and it was also there's some uh, smoke in the area because of some wildfire or something like that so I I felt like as much as I would have liked to have done that uh, I was going to stay up to midnight to look at they were going to look at some nebulas you know or nebulae nebulas what's the plural of nebula nebulas I guess I don't know I, and uh, uh, they were going to look at some nebulas, and I thought, well, nebulas are cool, but I'm not going to stay up to midnight until it's until they, they they come up on the horizon. They were saying they were going to show these nebulas and some other stars and things like that. Um, so anyway, um, that uh, uh, that would be fun too. So that's some of the many things they can offer here, besides fishing and um, and oh gosh. And, and paddling oh, and bicycle like so riding. Kayaks, 
yeah, kite. We saw so many kayaks so many. and things like that. Uh, and 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 unlike say Lake Whitney, that is a beautiful place, beautiful lake. Lake Whitney has one or two trails that aren't that big, and that's it. This one has. I don't know how many trails and they go all over the place and they see all kinds of things if you're into to, uh, bike trails or hiking trails this is one yeah. of those this is one of those parks that you need to come to because you can you can spend several days here and never ride or walk down the same trail twice mm -hmm. and do them a lot okay and so with that uh, is there anything else I need to add I can't remember no me neither uh, we had a great time and we had a great adventure with the tire and uh, something I don't wish on any of our viewers, but uh, be prepared and it helps. I had the wrong jack and I'm going to solve that problem. But, uh, you know, I had a spare tire, didn't get to use it, need to do that. Um, so anyway, um, that's about it. Uh, Cleveland State Park, a lot of fun and it was a great fun place to come down for just a few days and uh, for three days and and can't believe how nice it turned out yeah, yeah. anything else you want to add mm -hmm. okay well I was supposed to tell you guys be sure to subscribe and and like and all that type of stuff way back when hey if you really liked it yeah like and subscribe but hey share it that's really helps a lot uh, share it with uh, one of your friends and uh, or two or three or five hundred of your closest friends and we'd really appreciate that okay all right, well, thanks a lot. We'll see you guys down, you. The, down the road. Many of the uh, old CCC buildings that you see at state parks, the big white structures, the limestone structures that were here are now gone. This bridge, this old bridge, is one of the remaining structures from 1933 from the Civilian Conservation Corps. And I think it's just beautiful. I am so glad they decided to keep it and leave it here for people to enjoy, maybe for another hundred years, it'd be great. As you can see, these trails are a little bit washed out and a little bit treacherous, so keep that in mind. Well, apparently this is the trail to the spillway. We want to go there and uh, show you it, but golly, could this be any prettier? This is really something. Let's find out. Oh, which way do we go? All right, as I said, this is certainly worth the hike. And uh, the reason why I wanted to do this, really, is because this is one of the other few structures that survived from 1933 in the Civilian Conservation Corps work. That bridge and this spillway. And goodness gracious, those guys did some neat stuff for a dollar a day, didn't they? All right, well, thanks a lot. We'll see you Thank guys down, you. The, down the road.